morning prayer and the reading of the Passion in the service of Palm Sunday, the 24th of March, 2024, Community Church of Syosset. As we say the word Hosanna, let's remember to lift our palms and give them a wave, okay? The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus was found, excuse me, Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do, do not, not be afraid, afraid daughter of Zion. Look, 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 your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Let us worship God. Verses 1 and 2.
Lord your God. Uh, with all your heart. And with all your soul. And with all your might. You shall love your neighbor. As yourself. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice. And to love kindness. And to walk humbly with your God. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. You will love your dear. Let us pray. God of our salvation. We give you thanks to Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came in your name and turned the lonely way of rejection and death into triumph. Grant us the steadfast faith to enter the gates of righteousness that we may receive the grace, I'm sorry, that we may receive grace to become worthy citizens of your holy realm. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us pause and reflect our need for mercy and God's mercy, our call from Jesus to reconcile with one another and with our world. O Lord, who on this day entered the rebellious city that later rejected you, we confess that our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem's. Our faith is often more show than substance. Our hearts are in need of cleansing. Together we pray. Have mercy on us, son of David. Savior of our lives. Help us lay at your feet. All that we have and all that we are. Trusting you to forgive. What is sinful. To heal. What is broken. To welcome. And to receive us as, as your own. own. Together we seek our God in our silence. Friends, tell the daughters of despair. Proclaim it to the sons of sadness. Christ has come to save us. Hosanna. We will give our thanks to God, who comes to bring us grace, hope, life. Hosanna in the highest. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen.
This morning we read together the passion of Jesus according to the Gospel of Luke. So it's one of those few mornings in church where we have a lot of Bible reading to do. And it's and we split it up so it's together on script. It takes some energy, um, but I think we can uh, move through it well. So uh, I would just say that if we could open our hearts to this story of Jesus, uh, so important as we approach Easter, so that we'll have a sense of all that uh, Jesus of Nazareth, our friend, our teacher, our prophet, our guide, went through prior to his crucifixion and resurrection. Son of God amongst us. And your hearts, as always, hollow them out, are on the bold and passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel of Luke. After the supper, he came out and went, as, a, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, move this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. When he got up from prayer, he went to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and gloves as if I were a bandit? When I was with you today, day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him to the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still later, still another kept insisting. 
Surely this man also is with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord and how he had said to him, Before the cock cock crows crows today, today, you you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophecy, who is that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have have heard heard ourselves ourselves from his own lips. lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, He asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! 
This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no grounds for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged, and then released him. But then they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict and their demand that they should be granted. He released the man that they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, Do not, not weep for me, but weep, weep for, for yourselves and for your children. children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Let's go back. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us. And to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, What will, what will happen, happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus, there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last.
When the centurion saw, oh, I'm sorry. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breast. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed with, to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointment. On the Sabbath day, they rested according, according to, to the, the commandment. commandment. May God bless this reading of the Passion to our reflection, to the direction and purpose of our life. Here our video pooped out. Stop it, Scully. And evidently the volume. Okay. <laughs> so I'll try to speak loudly for the help of the volume for people. Um, this is uh, a Palm Sunday, as we know. It's Passion Sunday. Um, and even if the technology is a bit of a, a passion for us, you know, hopefully we will re resurrect eventually and get it right. What does it mean for each one of us to hear the stories of Jesus. And at this time, I'd like Ryan and, uh, and uh, Mackenzie to come up and just like to talk to them for a minute about Palm Sunday and about Jesus and about the great stories of Jesus. Why don't you just sit right here? And I'll ask you a few questions and let you go. Why don't you sit back here so people can see you? Can people see them? Why do you think we talk about Jesus so much? Any ideas? Big question. We just do, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's religion, right? What benefit could you get from listening to stories about Jesus? I actually didn't expect you to answer that question because, listen here for a second, what benefit do you think you get from listening to the stories of Jesus? Not fair to ask them a question we can't answer, is it? Except to make a point. On this day, we spend an awful long time reading through the Bible, right? You heard us do that? It's hard to stay with it even, wasn't it? And I even try to make it easy for people to stay with it, but it was hard. We listen to these big stories for a reason, okay? Do any of you ever ask stories about how you were born? Do you ever do that? No? Oh, okay. Do either of you ask stories about when you were little and started things when you, that you don't quite remember anymore? You do, Mackenzie. How about you, Ryan? Not so much? I always like to hear these stories because they tell me something about who I am. When we hear the stories about Jesus, we hear stories that teach us about God's love for us. So when you hear the story of Jesus, 
Can you imagine the people who really liked Jesus that were happy for him coming into Jerusalem? Waving palm branches? Hosanna, you're our man, right? They, they, they like that. And that was a powerful thing for them. But can you also imagine other people in this story? You know, uh, like Peter, when he was uh, afraid of getting caught and punished. Did you guys ever feel like that? Do you ever, you ever feel like lying to avoid punishment? Now and then? Anybody else here ever do that? <laughs> well, you're not alone. Although Peter felt ashamed of himself, and I hope we all do when we do things like that. You listen to other stories, in the, other stories about other people. Do you ever think about the people that, you know, were uh, the, these great lordly people who wanted to stay in control and have things be the way they wanted them to be, and that wasn't a change because they were in a good place? Did they like Jesus? No, you're right, they didn't. So, you know what happened, right? Do you think about other people in the crowd who were told that Jesus was a terrible criminal, awful person, leading people astray, and what did they cry out? What did they cry out, guys? Crucify him. Can you imagine how you might get drawn into judging a person and saying, piling on, right? You, you experience things like that. What about the people that, women that followed Jesus to the, to the place where he was killed, where he was executed, and how sad they were? Can you imagine how somebody who would follow even when it was dangerous, even when it was difficult because they loved somebody so much and would want to be there? All of these things teach us about the last days of Jesus. They also teach us how to live our lives. You know, if you believe that Jesus is what our religion teaches Jesus is, the Son of God amongst us, right? Then are you joyful about Jesus? Yeah, you should be. If you believe that it is right to tell the truth and to testify even when it's dangerous, but you fail and you, 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 you get scared, you do so, you're not so brave, is it okay to be ashamed of that? Try to do better in the future? That was Peter. He learned that. Is it okay to wonder about the great leaders that why do they want things the way they want them? What's in their interests? Why do they do it? Is it good to question that? To see whether or not they're really wise? Yeah. And what, by the time you get to do, when, by the time you get to cast your ballots and vote and things like that, you're going to be expected to think about that. Good person or not, right? Good ideas or not. And I trust them or not. Is it all right? to have great sorrow for people and show it. Yeah. All of these things we learn today are sacred. And as you live your life in these moments of joy, of guilt, and reform, changing, getting better, we live in this time of questioning as we live in this time of saying, no, I'm not going to pile on. I have no place to judge that person, right? You guys even see that in school. You know how when one kid picks on, gets picked on, other kids sometimes join in? Yeah. You can say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to pile on. I'm not going to judge them. And when you're sorrowful, can you show that and feel it and know that God is with you? This is why we listen to the stories of Jesus, to know that our life is sacred. And the way we live it matters. And God is with us through it all. Okay? Thank you guys very much. I think they did great, don't you?
friends, as we listen to the stories of Jesus, which we hear almost every Sunday, right? Let's let them flow into our lives. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we took what we learned in church from our own Bible study, from the readings of scripture, from sermons and other, other people that we trust to, to speak well on matters of the spirit, and use those ideas to actually make our decisions in life. You know, I, I just asked the kids about applying it to bullying, right? When people pile on, I think I've been guilty of that a few times in my youth. Is that right? Is that good? Are we going in that moment? Are we on our ju own judgment? Which we are warned is a dangerous thing to judge another person. Or shall we look carefully to ourselves, remember the humanity of everyone involved, and make sure that our critique, if there is any, comes from love, and our defense if it's deserved, comes from love. Look to the people in the stories of scripture and remember that these are given to us to remind us that our lives are sacred and the way we live our lives matters. As we pray and we reflect during this Holy Week getting ready for Easter, getting ready to celebrate the joyous resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, the promise that we too can share in that glory, will share in that glory, the promise of God's faithfulness, an abundant generosity on to eternity. As we get ready to celebrate that, let us spend this week reflecting deeply upon our lives how we can live them out more fully in accord with the mind of Christ, following the example of Jesus, taking the stories of Jesus to heart, and then taking the step of living them, even when it's a change in our habit or our typical behavior, that we may live our lives more lovingly. Because if we rightly hear and interpret and apply the words of Jesus, we will live our lives even more lovingly. May God bless our continuing preparations for Easter.
Friends, do we have prayers this morning? Testimonies of joy? Yes, Patty. Almighty God, we remember Judy. We remember the very special grief of all parents whose children die before them. Doesn't seem right or fair. And yet we bear with one another. And we support one another in our grief, trusting in eternal life. We remember also the Scheinfeld family in their loss and in their grief. Lord, send your saints to help. We pray to the Lord. Are there other prayers this morning? Yes, George. Last Wednesday morning, Judy's daughter in Tampa had a hip replacement. That afternoon, she walked out of the hospital. She was very happy. Isn't that stunning? Did you all hear Sue's daughter or daughter in law? Daughter. daughter. Linda. Linda had a hip replacement. Your hip, your bones. And she walked out of the hospital that day. I, I mean, we, we, we praise the, the skill and the talents of the surgeon and the whole healthcare team, right? Let's remember also this huge enterprise of bringing good and better health to people. The age of miracles does not seem to be past us. Let us pray that the miracles continue, not take them for granted, but say the grace of God must be in the midst of this amazing endeavor by how many scientists, how many engineers, how many physicians, how many administrators, how much will to live and to celebrate the sacred nature of life. And gratitude uh, for Linda and for all who benefit from our care for human life. We pray to the Lord. Are there other prayers this morning? Yes, Ronnie. Would you like to come up? What? If you want to face them, come up here. Take the time you need. That's a good spot. Thank you. You all know me as Ronnie. My real name is Charles, but Ronnie might have been called since birth. Uh, my mother. It's a long story. But uh, I kind of feel that I'm new here and I didn't want to like impose upon people, but I'm getting more and more faith from Reverend and, and the, the friendship I have with you people. And it's, it's helping me a lot. I have a uh, great grandson. His name is Finn Kaiser and he's not nine months old yet. He's had six medical procedures already. Uh, various things from you name it. And uh, it's devastating me. But my son, Ronnie, who's uh, the boy's grandson, uh, grandfather, said, Dad, please, be faithful. He's going to be stronger for these different procedures that they're doing now. So later in life, they'll be, he'll be stronger and be able to face uh, life uh, in a better way. And it's hard for me to see that, but I, only, I always pray that I had the faith of my own son telling me that I should have faith in, uh, in him and Finn. I think he's going to be better. So I ask you for your help. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Ronnie. I got that. He gave me the faith in, in, indirectly for one of his sermons to, to get up here like this here. Thank you. For Finn, Almighty God, we pray to the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And again, it's a good thing to reflect on all the people whose devotion 
and passion for contributing to his care. We give thanks for that. Are there other prayers this morning? Uh, we remember those people who um, have need of prayer, but uh, may be uh, shy or private about their needs. And so we always look for the opportunity to lift up our hearts for those who grieve and who suffer anonymously. We live at a time of war, time of conflict, time of terrorism, a time of sporadic but well-publicized, so well-known, terrible crimes. We remember in a very special way, more than special, in a heartfelt way, all of those innocents who are in harm's way in the midst of war. Remember especially the children who do not deserve to suffer. We question in our heart who deserves to suffer, really. We pray for all those who are displaced by war, those who have died, those who grieve. Soldiers we call legitimate who die in war, I don't know. And the innocents that die right along with them. We remember too those soldiers whose spirits and character will be marked for the rest of their lives by the violence that they have been drawn into. We can hope and pray that they did the best they could and that their duty and their sense of duty and honor is a balm to their conscience. And we pray that their traumas will not bring too much havoc to their societies when they return home. We remember all people who are affected by terrorism. We remember our own 9-11 so well whether they be allies or enemies. We, our hearts go out to any people who are shaken up and are living in fear and pray that their spirits will be tempered by hope and peace. We pray for all of those people who live and strive and endeavor to make peace in this world whether at the diplomatic conference tables, in the midst of our own government, in our local communities and in our jobs, those who seek peace even within their families. We know the trials and struggles this can be and how on grand scales and highly personal scales the struggle for peace, for harmony, can be a great challenge. And does not always work out the way we want. We pray, Almighty God, that your spirit will be with us, not to fail in our perseverance, but to endure, to act lovingly with dispatch. to honor love in this world and to love kindness as well as justice. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Are there other prayers? Let us pause in the silence of our hearts.
seek God in the prayers that do not yet have words but arise within our spirits. Consider the prayers on our prayer list and the people there. Remember the prayers that we have promised others. So we are bold to pray for the coming of the kingdom into our lives and the dedication of our lives to the kingdom. As Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Verse 3. for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God's people say, Amen. Amen. Good morning. Sorry for the interruption earlier. Technology is wonderful until it is not. Um, I have in my hand a card for Chris Kateris, Helen Kateris' husband who fell down last week and broke his hip and is in rehab. So um, I'll put the card on the table for everybody to sign. Please do join us this Friday at 6.30 p.m. for the Good Friday service. And I suppose Good Friday is what, the second or third most important day in the Christian calendar? Or I one of them, up there. I would say. Yeah. And um, 
our do join us now for refreshments provided by our coffee hostess today, Diane Metalis. Lastly, a word from Lara Richardson, our mission chairwoman. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a blessed Holy Week. Thank you, Robert. I just wanted to remind everybody we're still uh, collecting for the uh, One Great Hour of Sharing, which is a UCC um, denomination mission that we are uh, giving to this month of March. Uh, it's a great uh, thing to give towards. Uh, and also, we are still collecting for the Long Island Council of Churches. Uh, that's very important. Um, they're really low on, uh, I believe, their, fo their food pantry, and they're having some financial uh, difficulties. Uh, so, you know, anything extra that we can do in support of them, uh, just put that in the missions envelope, indicate it, uh, which, which, you know, you would like it to go to. Also, I just wanted to share, we received a very nice thank you letter from Cal and Lord, uh, and they are thanking us for our contribution and what, you know, what we give goes towards, they, they help over 20,000 New, New, uh, New Yorkers in the, uh, that are in the LGBTQ community that don't have health care, don't have the funds or, um, you know, don't have the ability to have health care. And I think it's um, nice if you wanted to stop on your way out just to read the letter that they sent. It's very, very, uh, it, it really explains a little about what they do to help so many people that are in need with not getting the care. And I know we touched on that in church today, so I think we should all feel proud as a congregation that we are um, contributing to that. Thank you and have a nice Sunday. You know, Robert asked a good question. Uh, what it, what's the order of the importance of the, of the Christian celebrations? And it stumped me for a little bit, and I thought about my uh, class in uh, liturgical theology from way, way back when. I hate to say how long. The reason it was harder to, to speak it right out, that yes, Good Friday is the day, is that in the ancient tradition of the church, which we, we still try to maintain, it's the whole week of celebrations prior to Easter called Holy Week, especially the three important days of the year, uh, Holy Thursday, uh, Good Friday, which we observe here as a service in church, and Easter are considered to be one thing. Uh, and the, the fancy Latin word is triduum, which our Lutheran and Episcopal and Roman Catholic friends and, uh, use, and they, they, they almost speak of the three as an inseparable unit. So we remember that as being the pinnacle of our Christian year. Um, and then after that, we consider Pentecost and uh, formally Christmas uh, about the same, just on the second tier and about, and about the same. Although because of gift giving, we, we certainly put a big celebration onto Christmas. Um, do by all means look forward to, the, uh, to some um, links coming up. We're going to try during this Holy Week to uh, have a Zoom where we show uh, a, a, a clip from a movie depicting the Passion of Christ, and um, not the movie Passion of Christ, but uh, depicting that and having an opportunity for a conversation about it, and I'll have some devotionals also. Um, I apologize for, the, uh, for any problems that we had in the video. Um, I have uh, another video, I've, I'm taking videos from two different uh, devices, so hopefully one of them will be good and we'll be emailing them around with a YouTube link. So thank you again so much for your patience uh, in the technology. Uh, we'll get it right, and uh, may God bless you as you prepare for Easter. Hope to see you on, uh, on Good Friday.